Well, hello there. So let's take a look at using phasers to solve circuits. I'll try to keep the math to the very simplest that we need to get these circuits problems solved. So this is a starting point of the math. We've got impedance, Z, for resistors, inductors, and capacitors. And we have it in three different forms. This top row is sort of the basic form that comes out of the differential equations when you solve them. The impedance for a resistor is just R. For L, it's J omega L, where omega is the frequency of the sources. L is the inductance, and J is the square root of negative 1. And for a capacitor, it's 1 over J omega C, where here C is the capacitance. These are phasor quantities, so we have two sort of standard forms for phasors either the rectangular form with an imaginary and a real part, or the polar form with a, a magnitude or amplitude and an angle. So here R plus 0 times J, or R with a phase of 0 degrees, 0 plus J omega L. So this one is purely imaginary and no real part, which means it's at 90 degrees angle and so forth. So these are the impedances, and we treat impedances just like resistors when we do the circuit analysis with Ohm's law and everything. So again, these are the components, resistors, inductors, and capacitors, and the impedances, and sketched out here on the complex plane. Impedances, we often just draw as a box because it could be a capacitor or an inductor or a resistor or some combination that has a total impedance. Z is the the variable we use for impedance, and they combine, impedances combine just like resistors. So if you have two impedances in series, the total impedance is the sum. If they're in parallel, it's the 1 over the 1 overs, and we have Ohm's law. So this is all stuff that we've seen in the previous lectures. So let's try to use these uh, for an example. So this is an RL circuit, a resistor and an inductor and a voltage source. And here the voltage source is a sine wave, which is what we need for phasor analysis. So 15 sine of 4 times 10 to the 4, that's our frequency in radians per second, omega, and a phase shift of minus 30 degrees. We have a 3 ohm resistor and a 0.1 millihenry inductor. And we're trying to find the voltage across the inductor VL. So the first thing is to make sure that all of our sources are cosine functions instead of sine functions. So we just use the phase shift. We subtract an extra 90 degrees of phase when we go from sine to cosine, and we get the right function. So this is our function of time for V, but we want to put that in the phasor domain. So we just look at the amplitude and the phase shift and it's 15 with a phase shift of negative 120 degrees, either written out with this exponential form or this the angle sign is, is a shortcut to write these two things down. And we do have to remember what omega is because that's going to come up in the impedance calculations. This is just one other way to look at the phaser for the voltage, 15 with a phase of negative 120 degrees. This is the polar form, so we would go out 15 and then rotate negative 120 till we get to there. And it has a rectangular form too, which we can use the equations that we've seen in the last two lectures or this triangle to find the real part is, is here, negative 7.5, and the imaginary part is down here, negative 13. So the x component is the real part, the y component imaginary part, and this is the rectangular form of the phasor versus the polar form. So the next step is to transform the circuit into impedances, just to sort of make it clear and easy to see. Usually we go with from, from the symbols here to just boxes, and then we have impedances for each box. So we convert it to the phasor domain with a ZR and a ZL the impedance of a resistor is just R, and the impedance for an inductor is J omega L. So those are the impedances there. And now we can analyze this circuit just like we would if they were both resistors. 
using the impedance instead of resistance. So if we want to do the analysis here, we're trying to find the current as our next step, current I. So we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage here, Vs, minus the voltage across the resistor, minus the voltage across the inductor, equals zero. And we use Ohm's law, where the voltage is I times the impedance. So IR and J omega LI, those are the two voltages, the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the inductor has to add up to the voltage at the source. So just like we would, but we can put a Z there rather than the resistor in, in a resistor circuit. ZR is R, or we could write it as R plus zero J, that's the rectangular form, or R with a phase of zero degrees, that's the polar form. ZL, the inductance, impedance is J omega L or zero plus J omega L. This is the real part and the imaginary part or omega L with a phase of positive 90 degrees. So the total impedance, because these are in series, we can add them together. So it's R plus J omega L. So we get a real part from the resistor and an imaginary part from the inductor. And we get three plus four J for the total impedance of these two elements. And we're solving for I as our main unknown at this point. So it's going to be V over Z, the total Z here. And again, we have to decide whether we want to do the math in polar form or rectangular form. Since we're dividing, maybe polar form would be easier because we can just divide the amplitudes and subtract the phases. Uh, if we use a calculator, then maybe rectangular is easier. So here I've put Vs into rectangular form. We saw this on a previous slide. We've already got Z in the rectangular form, so we have to divide these two. So you can do this in something like MATLAB. Here is our Vs, here is our Z, and I comes up to this, again, in rectangular form, because that's the, the natural complex number form that MATLAB likes. And if we want to change that to polar form, we can use the ABS function in MATLAB to get the amplitude or magnitude. It's about three amps. And the phase angle, the angle function in MATLAB is the easiest one. If I here is a complex number, you can find that phase angle using this function or ATAN2 or very careful use of ATAN. So make sure you can do this math. Try putting these numbers in and getting the same answers and try to get this three with a phase of negative 173 degrees. That's our current as a phaser. If we read through the problem, we're not quite done because we need to find an expression for the voltage across the inductor. And what we have right now is the current through the inductor. So we can use Ohm's law again, where V, the voltage across the inductor, is I times Z and it's Z of the inductor this time, so J omega L times the current that we just found. So omega is here, 4 times 10 to the fourth radians per second, and L was given in the problem as 0.1 millihenry. So J omega L is up here, this is giving our Z L J times omega times L, gives us ZL of just 4I, which was the imaginary part of the total impedance before. And we multiply that by the phaser for the, the current. And we can multiply the amplitudes together. 4 times 3 gives us 12. And we can add these angles together. 90 minus 173 gives us the phase angle of negative 83. And that's our phaser for the voltage across the inductor. And the book likes to use this form rather than using the angle sign. They put the E in the negative J just to remind us that this is exponential at the heart of it. But either one is fine. Here we've done the math in, in MATLAB, so we're doing it in rectangular coordinates. So we have Z as a complex number. 
we have v in rectangular coordinates as a complex number by multiplying zl times i. In MATLAB we get vl as a complex number here, and then if we want to go back to polar form we can use the abs for the amplitude and angle for the phase angle. Almost done, feels like we're done, because we have an expression for the voltage across the inductor, but it's in the phasor form, so we want to transform back to the time domain as the last step always. And so remember it, the, the full time domain is the real part of an exponential with the phasor here. We tack on the real part in this e to the j omega t along with our answer. Here's our answer in phasor form. And the upshot of doing all of that is that we take the negative 83 degrees and we put it right here in the phase. We put omega t and we take the 12 and put it right here. So you don't have to write all of these steps. You can just take 12 with a phase of negative 83 degrees and template it into this cosine form. And that is our final answer. We could graph it or whatever. All right, well, I hope you're beginning to see the advantage of using phasers for steady state sinusoidal circuits. And the fact that we didn't do any differential equations, we did do quite a bit of complex math, but MATLAB is good at it. Octave, the free version of MATLAB, the clone of MATLAB, if you will, is a good alternative. Your calculator generally has an I button that lets you make complex numbers, and many calculators have polar to rectangular conversion functions built into under the, uh, the graphing parts. So take a look for those to find amplitude and angle from complex numbers, and be sure to practice the math. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you on the next video.